Welcome back. Good to see you. Got some printing to do today. Let's see here. There we are. It's got 150 saddle stitched booklets, uh, a thousand soft cover booklet books, 200 soft cover books, another 500. Obviously, not getting all this done this week, but let's work on the booklets. Those are going to be color, 60 pound text. I got a big old stack of job tickets over here. So I just grabbed one. Sometimes it's kind of pointless because it's just me. So why even fill out a job ticket? But I have a good forgetter. So I like to fill out a job ticket either way just to get quantities. I'm filling it out by memory anyways. The type of paper, finish size, binding method, saddle stitched. It's going to be 4 over 4. But that at least, I mean, in all reality, a lot of the time this job ticket really just gives me the uh, the final count that the customer needs. Because that's the number that I forget. Uh, just because all the quantities are always going to be changing. So that's what I use this for. So let's get this sucker imposed. Send it back to the 3070 and uh, let it go to town. And got the perfect binder warming up. Alright, got those printing there, and I just printed out a proof that's going to get saddle stitched right here. I just want to try and stitch one before I print all of them. I do that for specifically books that are not designed by me, just because uh, there's a chance that the customer may have designed it incorrectly, so I just want to make sure it all works before I print them all. It's not bad. I'm gonna print them all. I just need to line up my fold and my stitch a little bit, but that'll all work. I'm really lucky that a lot of my jobs come ready to print, meaning I don't have to do design work, um, which is great because I'm not a designer and I don't have the time to put into the creative side of something. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. I have this booklet for uh, sprayers. So I really just open up the, the PDF. I go to impose as eight and a half by 11 booklet. And then I just go to print. I select my 1200. I go into the properties, have a preset for black and white booklets. I put in the quantity and I'm done. It don't get better than that. And half the time I hear it start running before I even get back here. There she is. And on a job like this, I typically just look at the first one and it should be good. It really is impressive how even the gray is. Typically that's where you see low quality shine through. But, I mean, the blacks are nice and dense and the gray is even across the sheet. It's a good machine. If you start seeing lines in half tone areas on any of the printers, it's probably a Corona wire that's on its way out. And they probably just need to be cleaned. Uh, if for some reason that doesn't make it go away, another way you can get around that is 
by making your line screen lower. All that does is make the, the, the dots of toner larger and that can sometimes hide those, uh, those lines showing up in half tones. So just a little bit of a tip, uh, changing the line screen can uh, really improve the quality uh, and uh, make your press run longer if you're waiting for parts or service. Remember, where there's a will, there's a way. Okay, printing uh, book covers here. These are getting printed two up. It's 12 point, coated one side. The back side is uncoated. The front side, front side is coated, and the grain direction is long. That's, uh, since these don't need to be laminated, I'm running them this way. So I started seeing little bit of lines through here towards the end so uh, what I do to clean that is the charge manual cleaning and typically I run that three or four times I'll show you where to get to it it's here in adjustments charge manual and then you just hit start and I run that a few times, and what that does is cleans the charge wire that sits on top of the drum inside there. And then uh, if there's any paper dust or toner that's on that wire, it gets scraped off. Just in case you're curious, this is the charge unit right here. And when we did that manual cleaning, this motor turned on, and it, you see this little white unit right here? That goes back and forth and cleans the wire that's in the center of this charge unit. And that charge unit sits directly on top of the drum. Uh, the drum's on this shaft. And uh, this right here is the cleaning unit. And then the, uh, the writing head's over here. So just in case you're curious what's going on inside here. And real quick while we're in here, if you're curious as to what happens to get the toner on the paper, uh, this is our drum. So the charge unit was right above it here. That charges the drum. And then there's an imaging unit here that writes the image on the drum. Then right below that, the uh, toner jumps across and attaches itself to the charged areas where the drum was charged. It rotates down, transfers to the paper, uh, and then this drum keeps rotating. There's a, a discharge wire here that uh, discharges the drum, and then it continues up to be cleaned off by the cleaning unit, and then it goes back and it's at the charge, and that just continues to repeat that process and the paper continues over through the fuser unit here and that heats up the toner onto the paper and then the process is done. It's that simple. And Albert Einstein said if you can't explain it simply you don't understand it well enough. I'm not saying I understand everything that's going on in there but Albert Einstein's pretty smart. Okay, those are done. They need to be cut, ready for binding. Book covers are in there, ready to roll. I have book covers here for the color books that I just stopped printing. I'm halfway done with this. And I got a newsletter I wanna squeak out before I continue that. And then I have a black and white book to do on the 1200. It's a busy day. Okay, newsletters are chugging along. And I have a reprint here for a black and white book. I printed these mm, a little over a year ago. Let me show you how nice it is to uh, do a reprint. Uh, we 
got them saved in folder two and it was back in 2019 there it is so we'll proof one and once we verify that it still looks fine which I'm sure it does we need a hundred books they're four up so we need 25 that's it okay all I really do is check uh, to make sure the registrations on and that we have a good dense image and there's quality which all looks good it's the exact same file that was printed a year and a half ago so this one's ready nope out of toner it's all right I got plenty haven't had any toner issues I'm when I first I uh, was running out and stuff was taking like two weeks to come here but now I keep a good you know four of each color on hand so it's been really good and so time and time again I'm just really impressed with the registration of the 3070 you can see here on this side that uh, some of these pages are different lengths than the other one that's because I cut this down before I printed it so this is my fault that difference of like a 32nd of an inch. But the good thing is, is the printed image is registered exactly an eighth of an inch from the edge on this whole entire side. So as long as this side goes back in my cutter, this wild edge gets trimmed off and everything is exactly perfect. So some of these are like a 16th and some of them are 30 seconds so this side changes but this side's right on so as long as i cut the wild edge off first it all looks great that's all right on Third time's charm. It's that time of the year. Time to turn the fan on. Okay, those are finished. I boxed up the ones that are gonna get picked up. And uh, those black and white ones that I started are done. So I got covers to print times two and then another black and white book. Well, I think that's enough fun for one day. So, going to call today. Uh, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope everybody's doing all right out there. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.